ahead and start with that. So today's topic, as we said, was on veterinarians and vet pets. And today we are looking at um, different positions that we have available. Um, just trying to get the screen back. So we are, we'll be talking to veterinarians. Uh, what, do, what do these roles do in, the, in their current roles? So we have a veterinarian assistant, and these are some of the tasks that they may do. We have animal care and service workers, um, so basic care of animals, including the training, the bathing, the feeding, and also non-medical staff, um, so the front office and some of off the office managers. And then um, we can go to the next slide. Not sure if we lost Louise because I don't have control over the slides. And you just hmm. Louise. There we go. Okay. So, um, so what do, again, what do each of these roles do? So if you are a veterinarian, which we have one on the call today, and we will introduce in a moment, um, they diagnose animal health problems, vaccinate against diseases, medicate animals suffering from infections or illnesses, treat wounds and dress wounds, set fractures, perform surgery, and you know basically advise the owners about the care for their animal. We also have on the call today two uh, students who are currently working um, as vet techs, and um, one is in college right now for um, to be a vet. Uh, that technologist will be her degree. So here is some information. Again, all of this information is going to be posted on our website, but you can see um, how working in the Hudson Valley, you're at an advantage compared to the overall national sal salary average. Um, it's a little bit higher, so that's great. You can see the number of employers competing um, in the area. So that information you may want to look back at after our series is over. Um, and the next slide, we're looking at where you can find these jobs. So this, this is interesting because most of the jobs here for in, in veterinary medicine are in private clinics and or hospitals. That's 76%. Some are self-employed workers. That's rounding out about 14%. Less than 3% of the jobs are in government, education, um, or social advocacy. So um, that's, that's a little bit of information. You also uh, might be wondering if you do need to go to school. We talk about this during each session. So you absolutely have to um, go to school to become a veterinarian. Um, you'll need a four-year undergrad degree, which um, one of our panelists, um, Jess, is working on currently, as is Laura. And um, then you can choose to go back to get your degree as a doctor in veterinary medicine. Um, and typically that's abbreviated as a DBM or VMD. Okay, on the next slide, we'll see, um, learn a little bit more about the vet techs. I think, um, Lorraine, were you gonna talk about the vet techs? I am, and thank okay. you. Thank you, Amy. I just wanna thank everybody for your patience. You know, we've all encountered crazy Zoom meetings and everything, so thank you. And thank you to all the students who are who join us for all of these sessions. I think it's fabulous. So um, the life of a vet tech, the vet tech title actually encompasses two job titles right now, the way that the Bureau of Labor Statistic reports it. So there's a, a vet technician and there's a vet technologist. Um, the only thing, Amy, is I can't control the screen. So if you can scroll down for me, that would be great. Um, so vet techs assist in, in both capacities. They assist the veterinarian, and we'll hear a little bit more about that. Um, and you can all very easily read the screen. I, I just would like to highlight that while we go into healthcare to care for other people or animals, uh, with animals, they can't talk to you. So um, the environment that you're working in every day is learning to read animal behavior, and that might not be something that we're accustomed to, and working um, around uh, different bodily fluids from animals and angry or scared animals, and on top of the animals and their emotions, you are dealing with the pet owners as well. So there's a lot that goes on. There's there's the straight up medical stuff in terms of drawing blood and, and running tests and being there for the animal. But there's a lot of 
of um, soft skills to take in when you're dealing with the animals and, and their caregivers. Can you go to the next slide? So Louise has control over that, I think. I, I don't, so she Hopefully. So, that. well, and I will tell you, so the veterinary technologist, as you go through, you'll see the, uh, well, the technician is a two-year degree. Unfortunately, Duchess does not have a um, two-year program. SUNY Ulster does. Um, and the vet technologist is a bachelor's degree. So you'll see that the average salary um, is around $35,000 with the higher end being in the 50s, depending on if you get that associate's degree or bachelor's degree, may depend on where you fall on that. There are definitely um, jobs in this area. The number of jobs are growing in our area and across the country. It's not a regional job where you have to live in a particular place just to have this job. There are opportunities everywhere. And again, you'll be in, in a lot of private animal clinics and hospitals, maybe humane societies and things of that nature. If you can go to the next slide. Uh, so again, this is what I, I wanted to highlight. Um, the technicians, you'll have a two years associate's degree and as a technologist, a four year. So in high school, sciences, 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 all of these healthcare careers start with science. Um, if you do the four year program, you have the opportunity, it better prepares you for moving on and building upward into those other um veterinarian programs and master's programs and everything. So you'll see it's there's certain areas and we'll look at it again a little bit more after our panelists speak in terms of looking at programs, but you can specialize also even within the vet tech field. Um, so right. that's Thank you, Lorraine, that's great. Sure. So um, I'm excited to introduce to you today, Angela Baffey. She is a veterinarian and um, she, we, here you can see a little bit about um, Dr. Baffey. She grew up in Columbia and resides now in Clinton Corners. And she can talk to you a little bit about her direction and how she got her degree and um, how she ended up working in Clinton Corners. So Dr. Baffey, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, it's a pleasure to talk to all of you. Um, so yes, I am a general practice uh, veterinarian in a small animal practice. Mostly we see dogs and cats, but sometimes we do see rabbits and hamsters. Um, I have been practicing veterinary medicine for four years. So it's um, fairly recent. Um, uh, my first career was working uh, in the Department of Corrections. I work as a correctional counselor for uh, maximum security prison. And I have a bachelor's degree in psychology. And uh, prior to the prison work, I did a lot of uh, work with um, people that had uh, mental illness, uh, people that had drug and alcohol problems. Um, and then I never planned to work in a prison, but the opportunity um, arose itself. And I did that for 10 years. And that actually helped me a lot in this career, believe it or not, because yes, you, um, the love for animals is probably the main reason that most people go into this career. But you do also have to like people and have good communication skills because like Lorraine said, dogs and cats don't talk. They cannot tell us, you know, what's wrong with them. And we rely heavily on the owners to help us um, do, do the work. And, and I often tell owners that we're detectives, you know, trying to figure out what's going on with the pet, why the pet is vomiting or having diarrhea or whatever it may be. So um, since I had been out of school for 10 years, I had to start all over again in terms of getting all my sciences. So yes, you know, this degree requires 
a heavy background on, on sciences. So I had to do that first, and that took me um, about two years. Uh, but once I had all those prerequisites, um, I decided to go to a school outside of the United States. I went to um, a school in the Caribbean uh, by the name of Ross University. And I did that because they offered a expedited program. Uh, I finished my degree in three and a half years. So I went through summers there. And also because I was an older student, I have, I have two children. And at that time they were, you know, um, seven and nine, the, that this particular school had a, um, uh, a school for the children of staff that worked there or for students. So the, it worked for me and definitely was a great experience. It is an accredited school. Uh, I attended there and all the students are either from the United States or from Canada. And I went there for two and a half years. And then you return, everyone returns to the US and we do our last clinical year at any of the uh, schools in the US, any of the vet schools. And I chose uh, the University of Florida in Gainesville. And your clinical year are your hands on, you know, you rotate to all the different specialties and you get a lot of hands on experience. So, so th does anybody have any questions right now? Um, I don't see any in the chat box. Okay. Um, so, you know, I have to tell you that I would say after three years of practicing is when I really felt very comfortable doing my job. So it takes a while, you know, there's a lot of responsibility. Um, you know, dogs and cats are part of our families. Um, and they, they're like members of our family. And it takes a while, you know, to really learn the ropes. Uh, it's really nice and fun when you have puppies and kittens and, you know, you do your vaccines and your wellness visits. But it's a little bit more challenging when a sick animal comes in and um, you have to figure out where to start and how to treat and what to treat. And one of the things that you that I did learn, learn in vet school that I find it a little that I find it challenging is to figure out I what I say to people is how to spend their money, right? Because they're coming into us and they're at, they're expecting us, the experts, to tell them what to do. But it all comes down to money. You know, if the money was not an issue, let's do everything. Let's do blood work, let's do x-rays, right? But People have limited funds and learning to use people's money wisely to help us treat the animal in the best way possible. That's something that you don't learn in vet school. That learns, that you learn that as you practice. But it's a very fun career. You know, I usually see appointments every 20 minutes. Um, and so it's fast paced. Working with, when you work as a team, the technicians are key because you cannot do everything yourself, especially now with the pandemic, we are not allowing the owners to come into our clinic. So we, the technician goes out to the parking lot, talks to the owners, brings the pet in, and then I do the exam or the vaccines or whatever I need to do. And then I go out and speak to the owners. Um, so the technicians are key and the support staff, we work as a team. I cannot do my job without them. But every day is different. You never know what you're gonna get. Uh, so in that sense, I think it's very challenging and, and, and fun. You never stop learning. You always have to be on top of your game uh, by taking either conferences when we were able to go and travel and take conferences or webinars you know reading articles and um so you never stop you know learning there's always some learning to do and sometimes you 
I think it's okay for you guys to understand that you do not have to know all the answers. It's okay, and I would encourage you to feel comfortable to say to somebody, I don't know, but I'll find the answer, or I'll speak to a specialist. I think people appreciate honesty in this job, and, and we don't know it all, you know, and it's okay. And it takes time for you to feel that it's okay to say, I don't know. But I find the answer. I try to figure it out. Uh, it is a job where there's so much places where you can work. You can work in government. I actually did an externship for the USDA when I was in Florida. And that was very interesting. So you can work for the government. You can work for as a civilian veterinarian in um, uh, uh, art for the Army or for the Air Force. You can be a vet and, t and see the, 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 the animals that belong to the, to the people in the military. Um, you can work in a lab. So when I draw blood and I send it to a lab, there are veterinarians that are looking at these results and help me to try to figure out what's going on with a patient. So you can, you, you may, if you don't want to work with people, you want to work in a lab on a mic, you know, looking at under a microscope, you can do that too. Or you can specialize. You can be a, an orthopedic surgeon where all you do is kind of very intricate uh, surgeries related to the bones. Uh, you can become soft tissue surgeon where you do a lot of surgeries with the different types of organs in, a, in the body of a pet. You could be a neurologist. Any specialty that you can think of in human medicine, you can do in veterinary medicine. So it's, it's a wonderful career in that sense. I didn't expect to work, ten, you know, sometimes 11 hour days. Our days are long. I'm supposed to work from eight to six, but sometimes I'm, I'm here until seven. So it's definitely demanding. Um, well, thank so that's you. a little bit in a nutshell. <laughs> no, that's great. That's a, that's a great um, overview of, of what, what it's like um, at your level. So we're also really fortunate, and ironically, um, I reached out to... You muted yourself, Amy. I apologize. I wasn't even touching anything crazy. Okay. So um, our next two speakers, um, uh, I reached out to individually, but ironically, they both work at the same place, and I did not know that. So um, I am thrilled to, to introduce to you um, Jessica Loro and Laura Scholes, and they're going to talk to you. Uh, Jessica, you can go first, and then Laura, just in the order on the slide, about um, your your passion, why you decided to go through this, what you did through high school and into where you are now and where you want to go from there. So we can start with Jess and then we'll go with Laura and then we'll be sure to have additional time for questions. All right. Hi, guys. Uh, my name's Jess. Um, I pretty much knew I wanted to work with animals for the for as long as I can remember. I actually started um, at 13 years old volunteering with my grandmother um, at Putnam Humane Society. It's a little shelter by my house. And um, I started there and because I was so young, I couldn't do much. So I basically just scooped poop and, you know, cleaned cages, but I love to be around the animals. So I took it. Um, and then um, my junior year of high school, I noticed there was a uh, program, a vet program at um, P&W BOCES. And it was just uh, two hours of my day that I would be there and I would take like a short little vet class and then I would go back to my regular high school and then do the regular sciences, Englishes, the regular high school classes. Um, so I did that my junior year and my senior year. And then after that, I decided that I wanted to get my bachelor's. So I started looking at some schools that could um, be vet related and also, you know, be able to get my bachelor's. So I am now a junior at Mercy College. I'm in their vet tech program. Um, this is a hard program. Um, I knew that coming in because it has a very good reputation. Um, so because it's a four year program, 
um, as, as everybody was saying before, I would be graduating um, and being able to sit to become a veterinary technologist because it's the four-year program. Um, it's AVMA credited. Um, there's externships, there's internships, there's all sorts of classes. Right now I am uh, going to be starting pharmacology and toxicology. I've taken anatomy, physiology, um, vet management, um, trying to think of other classes, clinical, clinical pathology. So these classes are pretty difficult, but they, they really, they, ex they, they exceed their reputation. I learned so much from, from these classes and I think it's a really good program. Um, let's see in 2018, a new hospital opened up. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of, uh, Dr. Jason Berg. He worked at, S uh, um, AMC. And now he opened up his own place uh, called Guardian Veterinary Specialist. So I've been there for almost three years now. Um, and that guided me a little bit because I, I started off as a veterinary assistant knowing absolutely nothing. And everybody teaches there and I learned a lot. Um, and because I'm where I am in my program, they allowed me to be a tech in training. So now I'm doing a lot, uh, more hands-on with the patients, um, placing catheters and administering fluids and medications. So, um, that's been a really, really great experience. And it also taught me kind of where I want to go after I get my license. Um, I really developed a love for emergency medicine, um, I love the excitement of it. I love the not knowing what's going to come in. I love the, um, you know, it's, it's not consistent. You know, when I was working in the ICU and some people love this, um, it's mostly the same, you know, same treatments every other hour. And it's very consistent, um, which I liked at first, but I, I, came to learn that I like the excitement of ER. You know, don't know what's going to walk through and, you know, everything's different. So I really like that. Um, and that's pretty much where I'm at right now. Oh, and um, actually, Angela, I was actually looking at Ross University. That is one of my top schools because I do want, after I graduate, I do want to go to vet school. Um, there's many surgeons and doctors at the hospital that I'm working at now who have come from there and they loved it and they're all brilliant so I'm hoping you know it'll work the same for me absolutely it's a great experience so, great school yes yeah I've heard I've heard really good things about it so I've, I've joined their seminars and um you know I, I've learned a lot and I I think that's where I want to go but I'm still on the hunt so we'll okay. see what happens very good thanks all Jeff. the best Laura, you want to go ahead and, and share your, your path? Everyone on board. Oh. Your audio is, um, it's not working. Maybe it's under something, your microphone, maybe. Oh, okay. Maybe it was your earbuds. Can you hear me now? Yes, now we can hear you. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I have a really similar story to Jess. Um, basically, I from when I was like young, I always knew I wanted to do something with animals. And I was like, I'm going to be a vet. You know, I feel like most kids have that dream at one point or another. Um, but then I like kind of stuck with it. And throughout my younger years, like I was in 4-H for horses. Um, and I know a lot of people like will kind of like have like weird thoughts about 4-H, like, you know, but it really helped me like make connections and like get that hands-on experience with animals. And they actually offered this vet science program um, that I went through and it just like, you know, it kind of confirmed what I wanted to do. So it was good to get that experience and, you know, all of that. Um, then in high school, um, I um, applied for a job at a, uh, general practice vet um, hospital and I worked th there for about a year or two as a vet assistant um, and I really liked it um, but since it was like a smaller like private practice I kind of s stayed in my job you know did like a lot of cleaning and taking care of the animals that were boarding um, 
and I, you know, I wanted to do more. So uh, actually one of the workers that worked there, one of the vet techs, she worked at Guardian Veterinary Specialist as well. Um, and so that's how I got um, to get over in there. She kind of, you know, spoke highly of me and recommended me to there. And um, that's something that I like to em emphasize is that like, you, it's really important to keep connections in your life because it will network you to like further places and you never know when you need a reference. Um, so then I started at um, Guardian in July of this year or of 2020, wow. Um, and um, I started as a vet assistant and at first I, it was all so new because it was emergency and specialty, which I was not used to. So um, it was a lot to learn and take in, but um, everyone was like so willing to teach you stuff and even stuff that you don't need to know now, like the doctors will explain what they're doing. And it's just, um, it's really helpful in like making your decision about what you want to do. Um, and so um, kind of backtracking last year, I went to Ohio State University um, I decided I want to go there, get my four-year degree in um, animal sciences, and then go on to vet school. Um, and basically, I chose Ohio State because New York didn't really have many options within the animal science degree, and I was really focused on that rather than doing biology and going to vet school. I really just wanted to focus on animals. Um, and so I went there, and I loved it. It was... Um, they had really great classes, always so hands-on. Um, and then, of course, when COVID hit, um, I ended up taking a gap year for this past year. Um, and at first, it was, like, really, you know, it was really scary. I was, you know, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Um, but then when I got this job at Guardian, it kind of opened my eyes that I wanted to switch to vet tech and get my bachelor's and my vet tech um, at, at school in New York because honestly it's cheaper than going back to Ohio State um, and then that was basically where I'm at now I want to go to Mercy this starting this fall and having that four-year degree allows you to kind of still have vet school as an option because I'm not really sure um, in the future but yeah, that's basically that. <laughs> very, very good. Thank you all for sharing. So we've had a few questions come in. Um, I think uh, someone was asking if you had uh, or know any information about the Cornell program. Have you looked at um, that? Yeah, so I actually know a lot about it because of 4-H and stuff. So I had visited there um, and I was considering applying for the undergrad, but I also heard that it's a very stressful program because it is so um, intense and, you know, Ivy League and everything. So they were saying, like, you know, maybe wait and do it as the vet school. You know, you can get any other undergrad school and go as long as you have the GPA and, you know, the requirements that you need for vet school um, and kind of save yourself and not, you know, really go all out and um, getting your bachelor's there. Mm -hmm. Good. Another question that came in um, was just asking, uh, was it hard to get, and this is for any of you, was it hard to get to where you, where you are? And was there, were there any mistakes that you made or anything that you had to overcome um, either in college or later on? I would say that it, I went, into Mercy College's program, knowing that it was going to be difficult, um, because I've heard that, you know, if you don't keep the grade that they want you to keep, and if you don't meet their standards, unfortunately, you do get kicked out of the program. So, um, for example, one of the girls that I went to school with, um, she wanted to go for the same, the same career. We both went to the same school. I took the classes a little bit more seriously. And, you know, when you're a freshman in college, you know, 
everybody's like, yeah, let's have fun. And I was sitting there with my nose in the books because I knew how hard this was going to be. So if you fail one of the classes once, you get the opportunity to make up that whole class the, the, the following semester. And if you fail that class again, you do get kicked out of the program. So you would have to change your major um, or you would just have to go to a completely different school if you wanted to con continue in the the, um, the track of animal science. So um, one thing that I'm really proud of myself is taking this really seriously from the very beginning um, because most people pass with a C and I'm passing with A's. Um, so it's, you have to have that motivation and to know that this is your shot. And, um, I noticed there was another comment about like expenses. College is very expensive. So if you're going to spend time redoing classes because maybe you didn't give enough effort the first time, you know, you can try and think to yourself, well, could I have done better? Like, could I not be in this situation right now? Um, so you know, it, trying from the very beginning is definitely something that I recommend to everybody and not just for college, just for, for anything. Um, Were there any opportunities that any of you know of for scholarships or anything to help with the expenses? That yeah. Yeah. There's scholarships that are available. I think it varies um, upon school. Um, academic scholarships from high school, you know, coming out of high school, if you have good grades, that gives you a little boost. They'll give you an academic scholarship. Um, those are the only ones that I've gotten. I don't know if they're, I haven't really dug deep into all their scholarship um, availabilities, but um, they have a lot. They have a whole, a whole team of people that organize it. So I'm sure that there's a lot of opportunities to get scholarships. Yeah. Um, I didn't know if anyone else wanted to offer any ideas um, on that. I was going to say, were, were there any courses that you took in high school um, that you feel helped you prepare for college? And likewise, were there any college courses that you feel really helped you um, for your day-to-day -day work? Yeah, I think that base, the basic sciences that you take in high school, um, like the biology, um, the chemistry, even physics. Um, some of those courses I had to take again, um, just because it's part of my degree and high school biology is a lot different than college biology. But if you have that um, strong background, you know, from your high school biology classes, it does make it a little bit easier when you're in these college classes, because you have your foundation, you know, if you don't take the high school biology seriously, then you have to kind of start from the very beginning. If you have that strong foundation, then it makes it, it does make it a lot easier to move forward from there. Um, and then there was another question that you mentioned. Uh, that answered the question that I had regarding just a class um, that you would take in high school that, that helped yeah. prepare you. Um, are, are there any other questions? I don't see any other in the chat. Does anyone want to come off mic and ask a question? I do have a quick question for Angela. So one of the things that we've talked about in a, in a lot of these sessions is to keep taking science in high school and to build the science, especially if you're going into healthcare. Um, for someone who has a background in psychology, what was it like picking up science after not doing it? Had you known, would you have taken more science throughout college or what was your experience coming back to science after leaving it and moving into healthcare from where you were? I know it was very, very difficult. Um, and you know, my degree was a bachelor's of science in psychology. So I had taken all those classes but many, many, many years prior. So it was like starting over. Um, I agree with, with what Jessica was saying, you know, there was a lot of a stake, especially, if, you know, most of the students that I um, encounter, you know, while I was taking all the prerequisites and when I got to vet school, obviously 
very young students, you know, in their early 20s. I was an older student. I was in my mid-30s with two children. So there was a lot at stake. And so since I knew that going in, I took it very seriously and devoted myself to, to this career because I was, you know, we practically, my whole family moved. We sold our home. We moved to this island. And, you know, I think for the younger students, they, and I even felt too, that I was in a forever, never ending vacation in this beautiful Caribbean island. So that, I think that tripped a lot of students up and a lot of them went almost to the end of their semester there, you know, their career there, and they failed more than two times and they had to go home with a big, big loan and nothing to show for it. So certainly very, very challenging, the whole preparation. Uh, so, you know, um, just knowing going, going into this, that is going to be, is going to require for you to devote yourself to it. And if it me, and I started at Duchess, I started taking all my prerequisites at, at Duchess and that's a great way to start because it's very inexpensive. And at some of the more challenging classes like biochemistry was very, very difficult for me. Sometimes I had to take that with a smaller caseload, you know, because some of these are very difficult, you know, classes for sure. And another thing is, yes, you want to strive, obviously, to be an A student. You know, who doesn't? But a C student, you will also become a doctor with a C average, okay? And none of your clients, none of your owners are going to ask you, what was your GPA? You know, because when you get out of vet school, you have a, a good foundation, that you're going to start from. That's where the real learning begins, you know, with your with your cases. Each case teaches you something. And that's what I one of my goals are, you know, I want to learn from each case that I see each day. So yes, I I did really well in some classes and I got lots of A's, but I also got lots of C's and it's okay. Okay? It was okay. Thank you, Dr. Bathy. Thank you. Um, so I wanted to also um, introduce Lorraine. You've already had the chance to hear Lorraine Katzstock again, but she was just going to speak to us regarding um, education and training options um, in our area and, and what, what you could do um, through Duchess. Thank you. Again, and as, as I've said this before also, it, it doesn't matter where you start, it matters where you end. We do have our general study science program where you can begin as you start to explore. But if you do want to see what else is out there, I just um, can can I share my screen for a moment? I want be. to show uh, yeah. the college yeah. board tool. Sure, at the bottom where it says share screen, you should be able to click on that. I am, um, but I somebody shared it. What? I disabled it, so if you just give me a second. Oh, sure. sure. Um, I should so be what able I, to. What I, I'm going to show you, and you may already be familiar with it, you may have used it for other purposes, is collegeboard.org. Um, and you can see what else might be in there, uh, what else might be available. So, okay. So on this, there's this neat tool where you can do a college search. So as I mentioned, Dutch Community College, we have a great um, general uh, liberal arts science track, but we don't have vet tech. So if you were to come to this tool and you look up one of the programs you might be interested in. So here we're looking up um, veterinarian, animal health technology and technician, which again are grouped together. Here you can see of the over 3,600 schools, there's 177 results. So we could go right in and start looking at that. But if you're looking to stay close to home for now or closer to home, zero. We're down to 12 schools. 
And so through here, you can start looking at what is available. So here's SUNY Ulster and Suffolk, Norwalk. It's, we're not limited to only New York. We're at a hundred mile radius from the Wappingers zip code. And you can look at the different programs and start to evaluate them. If location is not a concern to you, then we can go back and get rid of that. And you can look at your 177 results and click through the schools and look at the different programs in the other um, states. Great, thanks. Do we have any other questions before we wrap up? Uh, uh, yeah, Ms. Mark Marland. Hi, how are you? Good, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, of course, of course. Can I just do a little self-promotion for what oh, we have? Yes, please okay. do. Okay, well, hi everyone. For those of you that don't know me, I am, um, MJ McFarlane, I teach AP Biology at John Jay, but I just want you to know for those of you that are not up at the high school yet, we do offer an animal science elective. And you would have to take your freshman living environment course first, which is our freshman biology. But then after that, it is open to you as an elective. So we do have an agricultural um, academic pathway. So we have animal science, we have plant science, and then one day, hopefully, right, Dr. Watkins? Yeah, that's what we're working on. Veterinary science, hopefully. But um, we do offer our FFA program and all of our students that are um, enrolled in FFA, we like to see them enrolled in our animal science and plant science classes. So if you are falling in that category where you can take an elective, check out animal science and that will help you get prepared for going on for veterinary science or veterinary technician or technologist. Excellent. Very good. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for our panelists? So I know we are getting close uh, to the end of time. I did want to thank again everyone. I know it was a little bit of a rocky start with some Zoom bombing, but everyone was very professional that stayed here, and I really appreciate that. And we'll continue to work on um, some some pieces on our end to try to try to control that a little bit more. Um, this this video will also be with the presentation posted on the Wappingers uh, website. If you go under students. From the main page, there is a career Zoom health series, career Zoom um, series link, and under that is the healthcare. So you would be able to see um, the the recording here if you wanted to go back and and look for any additional information um, regarding that. If at any time you just have questions, or if someone um, that you know is interested in learning more about these, always you can share this link with them. Um, the link is in our calendar, so if you ever can't find my email, you can always go to the district calendar and you'll see the link for these events. They are held the third Wednesday of every month. Um, but if you wanted, if you had any follow-up questions that come to you, don't hesitate to email them. I will get them to the appropriate person and try to get you that answer. But thank you again, Dr. Baffey. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Laura, for you guys making the time out of your day. And um, thank you for sharing your, your pathway and your experiences. And you've inspired many of our students. So I really appreciate you doing that. Thank you. All right, everyone. Have a wonderful day. And um, we will